Welcome to Nobody Is Off Limits, where women are seen and heard. It's your girl, Lala Ian. On this podcast, we discuss topics like dating, relationships, and day-to-day life issues. I have a very special guest with me, and she works for Health Council Southeast of Florida, Lydia. So give her a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> okay, so you work for a company that deals with health care. Can you tell us a little bit more about the company? Yes. So Health Council of Southeast Florida is one of 11 private health planning locations. Um, We do a variety of services. We have a variety of grants, and we just focus on eliminating those barriers to care within Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast area. So you guys deal with everyone, basically? Yes. So is it from like 18 to up or like younger than that? No, there's no age limit. We have different programs where as young as three years old to get them health insurance, get them into daycares and just overall services for the community. So any type of service that somebody may need, we mm-hmm. will know somebody and refer them out or we'll try our best to help them. Um, so what is HIV? So HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Um, That's one of our programs that we offer. So we provide free HIV testing and we um, offer linkage services to people in Palm Beach County living with HIV. That's very important because I didn't even know about this company and it's a lot of people don't want to go get tested because they don't know if it's free or they don't they know if they have to pay or something like that. So that's really phenomenal that you guys do that. So what is um how is HIV transmitted? HIV is transmitted through blood, semen including precum, breast milk, vaginal secretions, and anal mucus. So any way and every way that you may be having sex, you can catch HIV. Oh, okay. <laughs> So do you guys also uh, talk about just like protection, like the protection part? Because I know a lot of people don't know too much about it. And it's people that's like our age that don't even know about it or don't even use protection. Yeah, and mostly don't use protection. You give them condoms for free and they still don't want them. I mean, we all like to think we're in a monogamous relationship, but in today's society, you never know for sure. So just protect yourself, get tested, be abstinent if you want, but definitely use condoms. And there's so many different types. If you're allergic to latex, there's non-latex, there's female or insertive condoms, there's flavored, there's glow in the dark. You can make sex sexy and safe. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and you know, it's so, it's a story, but, um, I was with a guy that he, was telling me that um, a girl that he was messing with, Mm -hmm. she was allergic to latex, so they never used condoms. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, it's condoms out here that does not have latex on them. But hey, who am I, bro? (laughs) (laughs) Who am I? So um, who is at risk for HIV? Everybody. Everybody. Do you hear that? Even if you're not sexually active, like I said, blood, Mm -hmm. it can be as little as you getting cut and someone else's blood is transferred on something, you know. Same thing with hepatitis C, which is one of the many STDs. Um, If someone has hepatitis C and they bleed on a surface, that hepatitis C is still active on the surface for 72 hours. Wow. So do you guys actually have people coming here who did not get it sexually? They got it other ways? Yeah, there's some people who are born with it and their families don't tell them. And then now they're 18, 22 years old. I'm testing them at the college and I have to tell them they have HIV and they're like, you're lying because I never had sex. Wow. So how do people be born with HIV? Is it the parents that have it? Yeah. So now it's regulated that um, the woman, as she's pregnant, every trimester, she would get tested for HIV. If she is HIV positive, they would put the child on medication for the first two years of their lifetime. And the mother should also be taking her medication as well. And as we mentioned, HIV is transmitted through breast milk so that child would not be breastfed. So kids could get it and then people come in and they say they don't have sex. So I don't know because this is a question I've always had. When they are born with the um, disease, HIV or AIDS, can you be born with AIDS too? Or is it just HIV? So AIDS means that it's a later stage of HIV. If the viral load is higher than a certain number, then it's diagnosed with AIDS. If the viral load is is higher than a certain number, then they're diagnosed with AIDS. So yeah, I will find out the specific number. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so HIV is the first stage. You have to have HIV before you can be diagnosed with AIDS. Okay, so do can people once people who have HIV and they have a child and they're born. 
can the child take the medication as a child and not like when they don't keep it a secret, which you should never keep that a secret from your child. Do they, can they like, does it stay or like, can it go away? So because the child is developing their, you know, immune system and they're growing, the medication of taking it within the two years should help. Um, but essentially they do have it for a lifetime. So it minimizes the fact of their, you know, transmission and them having that higher T cell count to be detected as HIV. So they're considered undetectable. At that yeah, time. that's what I was, my next question. I was about yeah. to say, like, can it be non-detected? Because I've heard stories on like um, TikTok mm -hmm. where people were saying like they were born with it from their parents and they have it, but it's non-detected. So is it still catchable even though it's non-detected? According to CDC back in 2016, I want to say they came out with U equals U, which is undetectable equals untransmittable. So in theory, if you're undetectable, then you should not be able to transmit HIV. Okay, so that leads me to my next question. What is AIDS? <laughs> AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, which is the latest stage. So people who get diagnosed with HIV, don't take their medication, um, or just lose track of time and never get tested and find out that they have it at a later stage, they have too many antibodies in their system. So their white blood cells can't fight off the infection anymore. Oh, wow. So... My and you know what? Have you ever watched the show Pose before? I did. I loved it. Yes. It's the, <laughs> I love Pose, you guys. So I love that show. So um, on that show, and I don't like that people think that sexually transmitted diseases normally happen when it's with L the LGBT community. That is, that is true. not true. Okay? It happens with anybody. Like my mom's, no, my grandmother's best friend, she had. Mm -hmm. Her son has both of them has. So they were born with it from their mother, but it's the point of like everybody could get it. Yeah. And it's so sad that people still and it's that was show was like based way mm -hmm. in like the nineties. And people still think that to today. No, it's not. And then it's like people in the world are literally knowing they have it and going out and still trans giving it to other people. Yeah. And it's like, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on with this world? <laughs> So um, AIDS is the stage after HIV. Mm -hmm. So how long, if a person is taking their medication and t doing their due diligence is going to the doctor and making sure they have checkups, can they still keep the HIV or does throughout the years, even if they do all that, it still turns to AIDS? They will still be <clears throat> HIV positive. They're not mm -hmm. going to be diagnosed with AIDS. But they're not detectable. So if they, you know, they're only detectable when they're doing their blood work. Okay. So yeah. what is the common, what is the um, common symptoms for HIV? Anything that you can think of now, like all these usual flu-like symptoms. You don't know if you have COVID, if you have HIV, if you have yeah, mpox, if you have the flu. It always starts with a flu-like symptom. Mm -hmm. And then depending on how severe it is there's other things that may progress like you might get have liver failure bone density failure but those are things that you have to actually get up and go to the doctor to find out which then you'll be diagnosed at the time so what age group do you see mostly that is the ones who are mostly infected like what age group or is it every age group <laughs> it's every age group but unfortunately right now the latest trend is is ours like 23 to 35 i bet yeah. <laughs> i truly bet <laughs> and that's that's sad too and you know it makes me think like what are you guys doing it's so many ways to be protected they literally have even condoms for girls now like it's so many protective ways in the world so why are you guys not taking the proper precautions before you lay down with somebody that you do not know and it's even scary because it's like you can lay down with somebody that you didn't do know and still catch something because people don't want to tell people that they got anything because they just want to get their rocks off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's a very sad situation. I was like, even talking about this topic today, I was like, it's a topic that needs to be talked about because it's so overlooked and people are scared to put it out. Mm -hmm. People are scared to talk about AIDS and HIV and sexually other sexually transmitted diseases because it's not only that one. It's a whole bunch of other ones that people have. 
So is AIDS and HIV the only transmitted diseases that are not curable or is it more um, diseases that are not curable? Because I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. So we call it the four H's. The four H's do not have a cure. They have a treatment. So mm-hmm. that's HIV, hepatitis B, HPV, and herpes. And then there's different herpes. There's herpes simplex one, which may just be, you know, a little cold sore here and there. And then herpes simplex two, which is more genital based. So regardless, if you think you're having a breakout, if you see a little pimple anywhere, just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. So um, how often should people get tested? Depends on how frequent you are, but we recommend every three to six months. There's a lot of local clinics that do it for free. So there's no need to say, I don't have insurance. I can't go. I don't want to care about my health because I'm scared to get a bill. There's places that yes. will help you. Okay, people, there's places. And I will put the name at the bottom. And it's going to be a link of the company at the bottom, okay? Yes. You guys, so if you need help, please go. If you And please get tested because it's very important. So um, this leads into my next thing. It's not a question. It's a topic kind of. Okay. So um, I used to work at a plasma center. Mm-hmm. I worked at, um, I don't want to put their names out, but I worked at two plasma centers okay. in Lake Worth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was a lot of people who would come in there and they would have HIV, AIDS, hepatitis, mm-hmm. herpes, and at a plasma center, we do not let, we wait, like, I think, like, a week or two before we send off the samples, mm-hmm. and we will test them, and that just gives me, like, people know that they have it, and they will still donate their blood, or donate their white blood cells, because that's what plasma is, is your white blood cells, mm-hmm. so it's just, like, very scary, because people will really come here knowing that they have it, trying to get money really quick, and still transmit it. You don't know who this is going to. Mm-hmm. This could be going to a child. This could be going to a person who has cancer. Because these are pe- people who are sick are the ones who need the plasma. So it's like, wow, why would people do that? Do you have people who is just like in denial? <laughs> yes. Um, so typically when we go through our testing process and we have to tell somebody, then we have three stages. It's like the pure silence, which is kind of the, you know, in shock. There's sometimes the anger and then there's the denial, but in their subconscious, they're like, I already knew, you know? Mm -hmm. So we just, we get trained to know how to deal with that. And we, we explain that it's not a death sentence. There's so many medications. We're here to help you, which is why we have our navigation and um, linkage coordinators. So. Okay. So um, when it comes to the company in general, do you guys ever turn someone away or you guys try to help? every single person we try to help every single person if it's not within our capacity to take them on as a client then we will refer to other agencies okay so what is like the things that are like no we just can't take you nothing 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 is impossible (laughs) (laughs) i love that and you know what i'm a teacher so um i teach high school and middle school yeah it's a lot so um with them they are so sexually active. Yeah. <laughs> They're so like, just want to get their rocks off so bad, so bad, so bad, so bad. Like girls getting caught doing things they shouldn't be doing. Boys getting caught doing things they shouldn't be doing. It's like, this is why I know they can't see my podcast because, you know, my kids don't need to know about this. But I want them to know that it sexually transmitted disease are out there. Mm-hmm. And it's getting higher and higher and higher as the years get worse and worse and worse like inflation (laughs) okay Mm -hmm. it's spreading like inflation (laughs) and that comes with the lack of education they're not teaching this stuff in the schools absolutely not i think probably what was it like fourth or fifth grade they start telling you about your body Mm -hmm. like people go through early development as young as second grade so they need to know absolutely especially now understand yeah with the menstruals and it's not just oh you're gonna get pregnant and have a baby like actually explain why and explain all the stds and all the different things and that's something with the school district so they should fix that they should fix it (laughs) they should but all health it's a lot of parents specifically because other other states need to get it together it's the whole world (laughs) (laughs) it's not just florida it's the whole entire world because a lot of parents are scared to touch that topic with their kids but that's what we're here for we we talk to parents and be like and we're like oh you could take it we are allowed to give condoms and provide Mm -hmm. testing as young as 13 and up so it's and it's they need to be worrying about it but parents are scared 
They are so scared to touch that topic. They're scared for the kids to know about it. But this is things that your kids should know about because it's very important. Because what if your child does do something and they catch something their first time? That is a traumatic situation, okay? That's like having sex and you was a virgin and getting pregnant for the first time. That's scary. <laughs> Episodes on Maury, the boy is yes. like 12 years old, the yes. girl was like 11, like, and the boy's just laughing. He's like, I goes, I wanted to get my willy wet. I'm like, Oh, this is a crazy video. Like, we need to teach them. You think that they're young, but they know because exactly. they're learning within the school. Within the school, mm -hmm. the internet. Mm -hmm. My kids love, they want to be celebrities so bad. I mean, and I'm just like, You're not. It seems like our careers these days. Yeah. And, you know, influencers, everything's online. They were recently talking about um, banning 15 and under from being on social media. But they should. They, they, have, they should. have a job, too. There's I know. There's, like, four-year-olds that are famous for playing with toys. I just want their parents to watch and monitor them more. That's, that's what I feel true. like. Because I teach a social media class. Mm -hmm. I teach my I teach broadcast, and I teach my kids a social media class. So I teach my kids how to make money offline. Because I do it. So I teach my kids how to do the exact thing that I'm doing. I have no issue with that. I just want them to teach them in the proper way. Because mm -hmm. there's certain things that you can't do online. Certain things that you can't stay online. Yeah. And even with me, like, I have to learn not to clap back on these people. Okay? And you people know who you are. <laughs> people love to say little things on my podcast. Like, who cares what you got to say? Da, 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 da. But, but you they're have... watching it. Exactly. So... And you took the time to make this comment. And it mm -hmm. took me... It took a lot because at first, I've been on YouTube for a long time. I haven't done my podcast for a long time. I've been doing YouTube for a long time. So it took me a long time for me to just not do that. So it's very hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very hard. So um, do you want to tell us any more about the company, anything else? I know you guys deal with anything healthcare. So pregnancy, like do you guys deal with teens who are pregnant as well? We do not. We refer out to our partnered agencies. So you still can help them regardless, though? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but along with our other programs, so we have HIV, we have um, opioid data to action. So we help in regards to getting people off drugs and explaining all the different type of drugs that are out there, such as fentanyl. Um, we get people into care. We have Narcan available. And we have another program, which is our MPOX program. So mm -hmm. MPOX was formerly known as monkeypox. So similar to HIV, it's a virus that's spreading similar transmission ways as well, but skin to skin wow. and with MPOX. So you never know. You think it's a small rash, it could be MPOX. We recommend getting tested and getting vaccinated for that. Um, if you want more information or if you need help getting an appointment, we can help with that too. Which link? Down yeah. below. Okay. <laughs> Link will be down below. That's very scary. I didn't even know what that was. Yeah. <laughs> so what what can you explain that to my viewers one more time? What is that? <laughs> so Mpox, um, formerly known as monkeypox, is a rare disease caused by infections of the Mpox virus. Symptoms are similar to smallpox, but it's not milder than Mpox. Um, and it's not related to chickenpox. So it looks very similar. You'll just start seeing small rashes and things. Um, it's spread by skin-to-skin -skin contact, including direct contact with the rash, scabs, or bodily fluids, touching objects and fabrics used by the person who may have mpox. So let's say I have it right now, and you go touch the doorknob, you may contract it. So you have to be very careful, wash your hands. Um, to get vaccinated by MPOX, they only have a couple of locations within Palm Beach County, and it requires two doses of the vaccine, and it can um, lessen the severity of the symptoms, mm -hmm. similar to how COVID So works. is it curable? It's not curable. Oh, so wow. <laughs> yeah. That sucks. <laughs> so, oh my God, it's like, this makes you want to wear gloves every single where you go. Yeah. Like, that is some scary stuff. Oh, my freaking goodness. Okay, so, guys, you know what that is now. Yep, more viruses. Let's be careful, okay? Because it's just seems like every time I turn around, there's something new coming out. <laughs> it's been around. It's just that it's not talked it's more, about as okay. much. Yeah, once they start getting cases on the rise, then they're like, okay, we need to push out this messaging. So Jesus, it's very much for. scary, okay? Just like COVID. 
I always tell my uh yeah, my still yeah I know like my some of my kids actually have it like mm-hmm. or they've been out of school because of it. And I just tell them, my mom like when I have kids I'm gonna tell them that I was I lived through a pandemic yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that is amazing that's kind of actually low key amazing to say like <laughs> I lived through a pandemic okay so uh, let's tell us let's talk a little bit about you I know the company um I seen you work for the company for a little minute now what made you want to get into like working with people who have sexually sexually transmitted diseases or even working in healthcare in general because that's a very hard field to work in. It is. Um, My mom, (laughs) she was very much like, you better not get pregnant. Don't be doing this. Don't be doing that at 13. So I was scared. Same. (laughs) So I got in all these programs. I learned and I just volunteered up until I was 18. Then I got a career in the field. Um, and I've been in the field for seven years now and I just go teach the same messaging and I say, don't get pregnant, (laughs) don't get STDs and give out lots of free condoms and educate the youth, educate my peers, educate the senior citizens who we think are not sexually active, but they are. That's so nasty for (laughs) God. I want to be just like them. (laughs) I want to be like them with my husband, just one person. But, um, so when you got into it, was it scary for you? Was it something that you were afraid to talk about? Because I do know, like I said before, like talking about sex is very uncomfortable for some people. Yeah, it can be awkward. And especially since I was younger, it's like, why is she bringing condoms to in middle school to her friends? Like they really thought I was doing something, but yeah. I wasn't. I was just the helper and the protector yeah. to, yeah. you know, help prevent. But and you guys, you guys don't know, we actually went to middle school with each other. We did not talk about, I don't think we had a sexual ed class in middle school. Nope. Yeah, they didn't even have that. Now, that was long, that was not that long ago, but that was a little minute ago. <laughs> okay? It, yeah. It's just like, today they don't, we have no sexual education classes in my school. No. Nope. None. And they might talk about it a little bit, but it's always like a couple days and then, hey, that's it. I feel like this is a class that needs to be had. Just like. My mom was telling me they had a class, um, home health aid, home mm-hmm. health or whatever, where they learned about credit and how to save money. These kids don't know nothing. No. Nope. <laughs> they don't know anything. Us as adults, even us as adults, we don't know anything about it. We don't know how to save money. We don't learn until we like in our late twenties how to save money and build credit. Yep. So <laughs> once it's already messed up. Yeah, once <laughs> it's already messed up. And then it costs it also comes with like generational things because like our parents didn't know about it. Because their parents didn't know about it. So, their parents didn't teach them. They didn't teach us. So, what what is the school system for? We've been in school dang near more than we're home. <laughs> but I, I love my school. Yeah. I do. But what I do, that's why I say, like, even with social media, I love that we have a social media class. Because we are teaching kids things that you should not do online. And even, like, kids who go and... It's a lot of kids who go and meet up with people they don't know and have sex with them. And then they open their bodies to these people, girls and boys, Mm -hmm. energies. And then you don't know what that person has. And it's also a lot of times it's older men or older women trying to talk to kids. Yeah, It's not just, like, how people think, oh, it's always older men. No, it's older women, too, trying to talk to children. Like, what is wrong with (laughs) y'all? What is wrong with you? (laughs) Okay, so back to HIV. You guys have Awareness Day that's coming out. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. So February 7th is National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Um, We will have a variety of events that week. So you once again, check the link. (laughs) You can see all of our events and come out, get tested, get goodie bags, and support the different agencies that may be out there. Yes, you guys. Okay, so support, you guys, is very important. Talk to your kids about it. Talk to yourself about it, okay? Go get tested yourself. I don't care if it's a family thing. Go get tested, okay? Just make sure your kids know about sexual education. Make sure you're up to date with it so you can be safe because we don't want anything to happen to anybody. It's a very hard road. I've seen people who have it and their bodies deteriorate afterwards of them not taking care of yourself, them being in denial about the situation. So you guys just be careful. Like she said, it is February 7th, Black History Month. We love Black History Month, you guys. Yes, we do. Okay. Make sure you go out. Make sure you click the link at the bottom. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we love you guys. I love you. Thank you for coming on. 
this was great experience and I hope people actually take what you have said and let it absorb like a sponge. <laughs> like I said, we are black women. We are hurt. We are loved. We are smart. We are important. And I hope everyone has a good day. And also, I know I have been disappearing, you guys. But this year, this note, it's going to be a thing. Okay? And you guys are going to see her again. Okay? So just be prepared. <laughs> okay, bye.